and the second one was microbiological concerns in refrigerated ready to eat foods with particular reference to low temperature long time cooking of foods that are packaged in bags vacuum packaged bags and then processed and the third one was natural antimicrobials for controlling pathogens and one of the attendees expressed some interest in this particular topic and so we will discuss this topic and I will try to conclude this presentation by 1.15 and certainly would like to have spare some time for our Q&A session, questions and answer sessions. So natural antimicrobials for controlling foodborne pathogens is the topic of discussion this, this afternoon before lunch. This is again the Eastern Regional Research Center. Those who were not present at my first talk, I talked a lot about my center, the, this institute where I have worked for decades. We are located 110 miles from New York City and 115 miles, 150 miles from Washington DC in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And uh, to cut it short about this institute, I would just like to mention that if ever you want to visit US, you are most welcome to visit us and see our excellent facility with state-of-the-art resources we have in the labs. And, uh, and you will like it and certainly it's a great place to work for me and I enjoy working over there a lot. It's a privilege to go to work every day and then um, work on science and help in improving the safety of our food supply. So biological interventions, most of the bio-derived compounds to control microorganisms fall under three categories, animal derived antimicrobials, plant derived antimicrobials and microbial products. So since I didn't have a time, so some of the slides might be a sort of repeat, which I would try. And so what are the bacter, uh, uh, bacter antimicrobials, for example, are the lactic acid bacteria and their metabolites, for example, bacteriosins, bacteriophages, and brillovibrio, and we'll talk about it later on. Plant-derived antimicrobials, herbs and spice extract, extract, and you have volatile oils, which are, which are of great use. Uh, in controlling the pathogens and animal derived antimicrobials which could be lactoferrin, lysozyme, lactoperoxidase, lactoferricin, they're all animal derived antimicrobials and some of them are, I have listed over here. So food preservation to ensure food safety is certainly a challenge because the quality of the food deteriorates from the time it is harvested until it is consumed and quality losses could be microbiological, chemical, physical or enzymatic changes and one individual, one school kid asked me last year, they came to visit us to see what kind of work we do and we encourage kid, the children to come to our uh, labs so that, so as to create an in, interest in them to choose their career in agriculture science. He asked me why the apples are waxed. And so my answer to that was not only for the appearance, but uh, to prevent the apples from bruises as well as to prevent mold growth. So in order to achieve the goal of conservation, there are several methods that can be used either singly or in combination, which means first of all you need to certainly uh, follow the good manufacturing practices, standard operating procedures, you need to take all the sanitary precautions as well as you specify the raw materials, you know, specifications of the microflora in the raw materials and then certainly you, you physically try to remove like washing of the apples and all that and then those that cannot be removed you try to kill them during processing or create an unfavorable environment so that the surviving spore farmers are not able to germinate and grow by adding desirable microorganisms or by, uh, by, uh, by uh, adding additives or food preservations, uh, food preservatives or altering the pH and water activity like that we talked. So consumers are certainly concerned with regard to the chemical interventions, chem synthetic preservatives that are added to the food products because there's certainly a need for naturally derived antimicrobials 
because of the resistance that is developed when with, with the use of the chemical preservatives and consumers are becoming more and more aware with regard to health and diet and we had excellent preservation yesterday and uh, today also we discussed a little bit and this should be a good take home message for you how to wash your diet and uh, according to Ramdev if you control your diet and take care of your health you can live forever you know and then of course uh, health and diet and risk from chemical preservatives just mentioned biological interventions are considered to be natural so what is minimal processing? Minimal processing is minimal overheating, less intense heating. Minimal, minimal processing is a technique that describes the approaches to food safety and preservation that are designed to retain the natural attributes of the food product so that all the natural attributes like <coughs> color, flavor, or texture are maintained in the food when it comes to the dining tables. Fewer additives, fewer chemical, no chemical preservatives, and use of hurdle technologies. <coughs> hurdle concept is a minimal processing technique that exploits the synergistic interactions of traditional preservation treatments. And according to hurdle concept, preservation treatments that are employed at low individual in intensities will have additive or synergistic effect while maintaining the sensory attributes of the food. Natural antimicrobials, these antimicrobials may exhibit antimicrobial properties in the food in, their, in which they are added or they may be added as one of the hurdles in multi-factor food preservation system. So, what is the, the, why there is a need for natural antimicrobials or why there is a demand because the traditional regulatory approvals have a limited scope. The organic acid for example and we will talk later on too are only effective at low pH and one of the common mistakes that is done while using the antimicrobials is that it is added in, into, into a food product at a pH in which, in which they are not effective. So green or green labels is self explanatory, I don't need to talk about it suddenly. Reduced levels of salt we have repeatedly talked and according to WHO I believe it's the, the recommended levels are less than 1500 milligrams. So chemical compounds or food and, and chemical compounds are extracts that are naturally present in the food or intentionally added to the food so as to restrict the growth of the, the contaminating pathogens as well as with the aim that they would um, uh, guard against the pathogens in the food thereby resisting deterioration in spoilage as well as safety. So these are synthetic compounds uh, uh, chemical uh, preservatives are synthetic compounds that are added to the foods or they could be biologically derived antimicrobials which you are talking or biologically derived means from animals or from plants or from microorganisms. So, so microbial control can be achieved by either one addition of one particular natural antimicrobial, if the intensity of one antimicrobial is decreased, the others can be increased so that the final outcome is the same as, as bacteriostatic or bactericidal and uh, if the sublethal levels of uh, several of these different antimicrobials we talked uh, earlier also with, with uh, a different mode of action or with a different cellular target, target should be the strategy to secure the microbial stability so that there is no adverse effect on the flavor of the product. And uh, when the microorganism strives to counter multiple stresses, they please all the ADP. So the ideal antimicrobial is the one that is able to inhibit all types of microorganism and should not lead to the development of, develop, should not lead to resistant microorganisms, antimicrobial resistance, what we call, be non-toxic, effective at very low concentration and stable during processing, we'll talk later on, be economic and does not have any adverse effect on the sensory attributes. So benefits of using natural antimicrobial certainly minimize food wastage or losses and ensures 
the microbiological safety. These are some of the health benefits I decided to include in this particular slide. Isothiocyanates is a uh, volatile compound that is, uh, that is present in mustard oil. So this has chemo preventive activity, garlic for example, organosulfur compounds, allicin, have chemo protect protective as well as antioxidant activity. Reduces the risk of, risk of disease and improves immune risk, uh, status of the, uh, the human beings. Grape seed and rosemary extracts are added uh, in to marinades, it's added to, uh, to reduce the carcinogenic heterocyclic amine formation. That is what are produced when the products are uh, barbecued on the grills outside your house in the open. So there's a carcinogens that are produced. So suddenly, grape seed extract and rosemary extract have been, sh when if they are added to marinades during marination, would reduce the formation of these carcinogens. <coughs> None of the antimicrobials is can be used to preserve food that is grossly contaminated and none is valid. Uh, we'll talk, I'll talk later on. None is ideal for all kind of food products, which means a low level of contamination is very, very necessary and should be consistent with the good manufacturing practices. Uh, good sanitary practices in combination with systems approach can reduce the need for additional food preservatives. What is systems approach means? The industry has adopted a systems approach for preservating food, which means each component of the system, which means for, as a first step, food processing with antimicrobials, processing operations, and packaging. They all pay an, uh, play an additive or synergistic role towards stability, storage, and safety of the products. So, what are the factors that affect the activity of natural antimicrobials? Certainly, ionizing of the, uh, ion, uh, the, it's the undissociated form of the acid that is able to penetrate the cell membrane. So, physical and chemical properties of the antimicrobials, which I've listed, PKA values, you know, which uh, uh, those who biochemistry or chemistry courses, they are well aware of the PKA values and the un undissociated form of the compound that is able to penetrate the cell membranes resulting in the destruction of the cells as a result of, for example, leakage of the, uh, as a result of increasing the permeability of the membranes leading to <coughs> leakage of the intracellular constituents. Microbial of species and strains within a particular species and the cellular status of the microorganism, if the cells have been injured, that certainly would increase the sensitivity to natural antimicrobials. Intrinsic food-related pH, lipid, and certainly there's a, uh, there's a limit, one of the limit, limiting factor is the solubility of the antimicrobials in the lipid portions, or the binding to the lipids that reduces the efficacy of the antimicrobials, and uh, what else, uh, oxidation reduction potential. Uh, and uh, extrinsic factors, temperature, time, as well as relative humidity, atmosphere, process, process affecting the, the microstructure of the food, for example, or the properties of food that would have an influence too. And the um, ideal thing is that the process should not be such that it should not affect the added preservative, or, or uh, for example, starter cultures or yeast used in baking, you don't want those to be inactivated during the processing. So, it's very, very difficult to elucidate the mode of action or the mechanism of action of the antimicrobial. Why is that so? Because more than one activity of uh, and cellular constituent is effective and because of the complexity and non-homogeneity of the food system in which the antimicrobials are added and in addition to that there are a number of factors that affect the proliferation or survival or inactivation of the pathogens in, in the food which we discussed earlier like pH water activities all these fact, uh, factors that influence the growth or the proliferation of the microorganisms certainly add to the complexity 
of elucidating the mechanism of action of the antimicrobial in general it can be categorized into three mode of actions reaction with the cell membrane inactivation of essential enzymes or destruction of the genetic material so plant derived antimicrobials uh, leaves like for example bas basil cilantro mint oregano rosemary stems and from flowers you have saffron clove you all are well familiar with clove fruits cardamom allspice pepper vanilla so bulbs you know the garlic onions you are well familiar with Rhys rhizomes those who studied botany they are well aware of this ginger turmeric asafoetida etc so what are the spices and the essential oils in cloves you have eugenol cinnamon you have cinnamaldehyde thyme you have the carvacol vanilla vanillin rosemary you have camphor and most of you must be familiar with all of these terms so gram negatives are less susceptible than gram positives because of the hydro they are the essential oils are hydrophobic compounds and again once again it says the reaction with the cell membrane is the mode of action or the inactivation of essential enzymes cranberries and other berries plant sources berry fruits are rich sources of bioactive compounds polyphenolics and organic acids so uh, olive tree uh, leaves and roots rich in biophenols such as oleo oleo pain pe etc they have antioxidant antimicrobial properties <coughs> mustard it's a member of the cruciferi family which you must have read in your botany class allyl isothiocyanate is a volatile uh, compound from mustard oil primary components in their seeds and formed by the action of the enzyme myrosinase on glucose glucosinolates when plant tissues are injured and it has more potent activity against listeria monocytogenes and several other pathogens and fungi and the yeast gram positives are more resistant than gram negatives garlic again it inhibits a growth and toxin production by p series clostridium botulinum and several other food borne pathogens and the study that was published by kim and others his co-workers in 2010 inhibits the naturally occurring, occurring microflora and processed meat products so this is about food tomato juice it, uh, these are all different studies that have been published and i decided to summarize this studies the clove oil mint extract niacin which is a bacteriocin citral they all have been shown to have an efficacy uh, against the microorganism this is a orega oregano oil again and uh, so uh, it has been shown to uh, inhibit the spoilage microflora lysozyme relatively heat resistant and is present in majority of the foods and uh, this uh, when i did the study several years ago we found that it enhances the recovery of the heat injured spores is generally regarded as safe approved for direct addition to the food and is found like i just mentioned is found found in several food products like eggs and vegetables and insects and plants fungi etc is active against gram positives and several other pathogens lysozyme there are commercial preparations also available art fresh 5050 inova pure which extends the shelf life of the raw and processed meat and milk products lactoperoxidase system those who uh, it's very those who have worked with uh, dairy and dairy products or from national dairy research, research institute they must be well familiar with this lactoperoxidase oxidase system found in raw milk saliva and colostrum it has been shown to have an antimicrobial activity against variety of different pathogens and effective more effective against gram negative bacteria and improves the shelf life of the raw and pasteurized milk so is there one i think it was several years ago uh, one uh, researcher from one of the universities in south he came up with the activated uh, lactoferrin that was found to be very very effective in detaching the microorganisms from uh, the surface of the carcasses and uh, he published a book on natural natural antimicrobials too so the advantage is that it is effective against a wide ph range and like i mentioned earlier it is relatively heat resistant 
Kaidosin, I published a review paper on Kaidosin in the Journal of Food Protection a few years ago, and I'll be glad to send you a copy of that paper. That review article is uh, active and did publish a few papers on Kaidosin too. Uh, it's active against several foodborne pathogens. It's a low molecular weight Kaidosin at pH less than 6 is effective as an effective antimicrobial in liquid and solid foods. Well, this is one of my studies in which I worked with Mandel Friedman, who also worked for the USDA at the Western Regional Research Center. And he's 84 years old and he does not want to retire because he likes working. Titles and films have been used in the packaging materials. Lepers, free fatty acids isolated from the mucosal surfaces of animals and milk lepers. So here is some of my studies, we looked at the effect of efficacy of 3% white tea, ground powder, powder, water extract, green tea, and apple polyphenols, and we published all these different work and how they can be used to render the pathogens more sensitive to the lethal effect of it. And we clearly demonstrated, based on the D values, the, they are decreased, that, that these, compound, these uh, natural antimicrobials could be used to render this deadly pathogen more, more sensitive to the lethal effect of heat. This is again transcendamaldehyde carvacol and heat resistant salmonella and ground chicken. When uh, uh, researchers come to work in my lab for two, three months, they do this kind of pro project so that they can finish the data acquisition and then later on we analyze the data and work with them to publish. So, Again, once again, you see this transcendamaldehyde can be used to decrease the heat resistance. Uh, but we did not work on how, if they affect the flavor of the product. Carvacol transcendamaldehyde, this is about salmon and ground chicken. This is Clostridium perfringens, how we can add thymol, for example, in, so that the processes can increase the time and temperature for cooling of the product and still be able to document less than one log increase of clostridium perfringens. So we found that certainly thymol can be used. 15-hour uh, cooling, so in controls, the low levels reach to seven logs, whereas with the addition of 2% thymol controls after cooking at 60 degrees in a period of one hour, and then cooling in 15 hours, the levels did not increase. So, which means it can be considered to be added into the food product so as to control the outgrowth of clostridium perfringens spores during the cooling of the products. This is Cinemaldi had the same kind of study where you see the levels are increasing in the controls, whereas with the addition of 1% Cinemaldehyde, they still even go down. They go down because uh, when the Clostridium, because it might be because of the artifacts during the plating technique, or it could be because the way it is says that were formed, were inactivated due to the presence of cinnamaldehyde. So this is effects and interactions of apple polyphenols and, and NSCL, and this study we published, we developed a model. We clearly demonstrated that with the addition of this this particular additive, which is again a natural antimicrobial, you can decrease the heat resistance 9 to 6. And these are the fitted or the estimated values once again. This model, this was done by one of the Turkish PhD students. She came to work in my lab and collected all the data and the paper was written after we developed the model and it was published. So microbes and their products. So they are Lactic acid bacteria, they are natural flora of the processed meats, and I've listed the species over here. During fermentation, they produce flavor and the textural changes in the, in the fermented, fermented products, and certainly inhibit the spoilage and pathogenic bacteria by the metabolites that are produced during the growth of this, these uh, naturally occurring lactic acid bacteria. And of course, they increase the shelf life of the product. What are the metabolites? Those who have taken a fermentation course, they're home, homo-fermentative and hetero-fermentative, you know, uh, and then there are lactic acid, acetic acid, bacteriosins, nicins, pediosins, uh, and then uh, diacetyl, which is a flavor compound, for example, in butter. And so carbon dioxide that creates an un, uh, anaerobic work, anaerobic environment. 
So this uh, acids uh, have been used uh, uh, for decontaminating the carcasses and combination of lactic acid and niacin has uh, also been uh, evaluated for their efficacy ag against Listeria monocytogenes in vacuum packaged beef. This is again, if you recall, I had mentioned that type of the acidulin that is used to decrease the pH does have play a role in decreasing the heat resistance. So if you see the same pH over here, the lactic acid, the D values are 26 compared to acetic acid when the D values are 20. And this was published in letters in Applied Microbiology several years ago. So bacteriocins, they are the protein molecules released by the lactic acid bacteria and they are, have a exhibit in inhibitory effect against the closely related species of the bacteria. Their gram positives are more sensitive and the outer member because the outer membranes of gram negatives are impermeable, impermeable to bacteriocins. There are three different classes. So you can get a copy of my presentation if you want. So natamycin is antimycotic. It is produced by streptomyces species. It's approved in U.S. in 1982 for use in cheese to inhibit mold growth, minimum MIC, which is the minimum inhibitory concentration is less than 20 parts per million. It's, uh, uh, it's bind, its solubility in the aqueous food system is 20, 40 parts per million, according to one of the researchers from UK. Niacin is uh, again uh, uh, gas antimicrobial, got an approved status in 1988. Used for uh, uh, it's, uh, in early 80s, the food, it was approved as a it was listed as a food additive in the Europe, and it's heat stable. It's inhibitor to gram positives, and for gram negatives, if it is used with chelators like ED, EDTA. And it, uh, the mode of action I have listed over here, it increased. Yes. Yeah. And the word there, one of the authors, Tom Montville from Rutgers University, wrote in his concluding statements, it cannot be considered as a silver bullet that, if that it will, it will, it that it could uh, guard against, particularly the Clostridium botulinum. So there are a number of studies that were done with Nicene, and we have not used this. But I remember 25 years ago, I read a review paper from NDRI on niacin, so there must be, it's being, uh, it was uh, researchers at NDRI were working on the, with niacin that time. So niacin, um, Zhang and Mustafa from uh, University of Missouri came up with that, it can be used to inhibit, to control listeria monocytogenes in fresh beef and ready to eat meat products. So there are a number of other publications I have listed over here. Niacin is used for the lactic acid bacterial spoilage in vacuum packaged bologna type sa sausage. So these are some of the other uh, publications. So pediocin, which is again an antimicrobial, uh, a bacteriocin, which is pH and heat stable. Uh, has been shown and the mode of action I have listed over here and uh, so this has also been used to control in variety of processed products. Collison is a net, narrow spectrum of, spectrum of activity so it's also effective against Listeria and Clostridia. re, re is again one of the bacteriocins produced by this particular lactic acid bacteria and under the anaerobic, it's an anaerobic metabol metabolism of glycerol and it's effective both against gram positives and gram negative. Bacteriophages, uh, this is uh, also a natural microflora in many foods and obligate, it's an obligate parasite and phages, lice, living bacterial host. So it has been used in the hurdle technologies active against gram positive and gram negatives. And commercial applications were develop phage mixtures with specificity for the target organisms. Badilla webrio is again, it infect and lies gram negative bacteria. And several years ago, there were some publications in Badilla webrio. 
So, how do you develop an antimicrobial system? What are the challenges for food applications? Now I'll come to the interesting part of this presentation. So, antimicrobials are not broad spectrum, and they should be matched with the organism that is a target in a food product. Higher is the level of contamination, you need certainly more antimicrobials. Bacteriocins, for example, are effective when the low numbers of, uh, low, with, against a low number of microorganisms. Properties and the composition of the food. One of the common mistakes that is done is to use the antimicrobial at a pH at which it is not effective. So you certainly have to keep in mind the pH of the food system. Properties of the antimicrobial system. Activity, characteristics, and stability of the antimicrobial must be matched with the properties and the processing of the food. Processing conditions, antimicrobial should survive, be able to survive the processing condition and should not be adversely affected by the process, for example, starter cultures that are used or uh, yeast during the baking. Storage temperature and condition, the antimicrobial should be effective throughout the shelf life of the product under the conditions the product would be stored. Good manufacturing practices, sanitation, a consistent low level of contamination is uh, required and so you need to take care of the good manufacturing practices um, as far as uh, you cannot uh, or the, you have to take all the prophylactic measures or uh, hygiene for example. If the product is grossly contaminated certainly it would not be effective. Uh, combination of system. A processor should take into account all the additives when they develop an antimicrobial system. And what are all the different additives? Antioxidants, uh, medium chain fatty acids, acetylants, natural bacteriocins, as well as um, added preservatives. So you need to have to have a because of the synergistic effect of all these different additives in the food. Combination, uh, cost effectiveness. You cannot e develop a, the, the economy. The cost of developing an antimicrobial system should be consistent with the protection and the safety that is achieved with the use of that particular antimicrobial system. Verification is the process res processor responsibility to verify the efficacy of the the, the natural antimicrobial system in their product. Regulations, of course, is very important. Uh, the use of antimicrobial, the, the antimicrobial should be used uh, uh, in accordance with the applicable regulations. So, yeah. No, we'll talk about it. No, there's absolutely no such thing, and we'll talk about it in a, in a minute. These are some of the slides I decided to include recently. Um, the carbonate-based beverage systems, it's a homogeneous and acidic, comprises mainly of water and sugar with very low or no proteins or fat. Antimicrobials are dispersed evenly. There's an even distribution of the added preservatives in carbohydrate-based beverage systems. And activity is active against yeast and has a protective effect when there's a cloudy apple juice, for example, and the carbohydrates present may reduce the activity. Bakery products that are low in proteins, non-homogeneous structures, neutral pH certainly limit the performance of the antimicrobials. And it's, it has been demonstrated to be active against fungi in the bakery products because the major problem is the mold growth on the surface of the bakery products. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits are acidic. We all know that. And uh, fruits, acidic and vegetables have to improve food safety and control the spoilage. Uh, they have been used as rinses, sprays, or washing techniques, or vapor treatments, the volatile, uh, the, the herbs have the volatile compounds, <coughs> which we just mentioned earlier. Edible coatings, dairy products, they have high pH and water activity, the uh, high level of proteins, fat, and divalent cations. Higher fat means decreased activity. <coughs> So, Kanika, who worked with the Dr. Shalini, has done her PhD on antimicrobial delivery systems. And she has published a few papers <coughs> on antimicrobial delivery systems. 
<coughs> so an encapsulation technique using L micro emulsions have been shown to be effective against listeria monocytogenes and E. coli and milk, and milk products and I should have cited her research but I forgot. So she has worked, with, worked a lot with antimicrobial delivery systems and sh recently she finished a paper co-authoring with Shalini from IIT Kharagpur on uh, antimicrobial de delivery systems that is one of the chapters in my upcoming book that would be published by next summer. So for meat, poultry and seafood products it's most challenging because of the no non-homogeneous nature, high pH of the meat and high in protein and fat because of solubilization of the binding of the antimicrobial to the fats. And antimicrobials have been used in combination with packaging techniques. So what are the different ways of application of the antimicrobials? You can incorporate into the food product, you can spray or immerse the product in an antimicrobial station, dusting out the product with a dry powder or incorporating into the packaging films. Those who will attend my lecture on Sunday, I will be talking a little bit about the antimicrobials in the packaging materials because the memorial lecture is supposed to be for someone in memory of the packaging is what I heard. So this uh, we have talked a lot about this about um, building uh, different uh, about the hurdle systems and all that so I will not spend advanced technologies for antimicrobial delivery to food encapsulation and bioactive packaging. So the application of antimicrobial agents to package create an environment inside the package which delays or even prevents the growth of microorganisms on the product surface and hence may lead to the extension of the shelf life. The bacteria which could be a pathogen or a spoiled bacteria grows on the surface of the product. We all know that if the product is solid there are no bacteria inside the product, it's only on the surface. So uh, if the packaging material has an antimicrobial and if there's a slow release of the antimicrobial on the surface of the product, that would certainly inhibit the growth of the small spoilage microflora, microflora on the surface of the product. These are some of the natural antimicrobial packaging materials na uh, that natural antimicrobials have been used, lysozyme from egg white which is again a natural uh, antimicrobial along used with polyvinyl alcohol nylon or silo, cellulose acetate has been used to against the listeria monocytogenes, pediocin which is produced by pediococcus used to coat cellulose casings and powder bags and has also been shown to have an antimicrobial effect on chilled meat and poultry. Vaporized allyl isothiocyanate, a compound, a compound from mustard oil, in, has been used in packaging materials so as to control the microorganisms. So, what is the need for research for natural antimicrobials? Certainly, you need to assess the efficacy and functionality in for the models of food systems and foods. Toxicology is very, very important. Some of the um, the antimicrobial herbs could be toxic in nature. Interaction with the food components because there's sufficient evidence the solubility in the lipids would certainly decrease the efficacy of the antimicrobials because most of the antimicrobials are partially hydrophobic in nature. Mechanism of action is very, very important because you need to use this antimicrobial subly minimal level of these anti these natural preservatives with a different mode of action. We certainly do not want to alter the flavor of the product and do not want the product to repelling uh, uh, flavors because the flavor is very important for the consumers uh, in addition to of course uh, with con um, safe product. So uh, method of application in commercial formulations, extraction, isolation, isolation and economic production is very important. So challenge as for the use of natural antimicrobials, this is my last slide, is to isolate, purify, solubilize and incorporate natural antimicrobials into the food without a negative impact on 
the sensory attributes of the food or without substantial increase in the cost of uh, preparing or marketing of the food products. This is all I have and we have 10 minutes for discussion before we disperse at 1.15. Any questions? Yeah. What? Minimally packaged? Minimally packaged means that it's easy for the it's easy for the consumers to remove the packaging material and then microwave it. Sometimes you can microwave with the packaging materials, uh, with slightly making a hole so that the steam could be get out. So it's not complex, not difficult to remove the packaging material. And minimally packaged also means the products that are uh, minimally processed and packaged. Which means, uh, which means with least amount of preservatives in it and which are minimal, minimal there was not too much heat employed to that, you know. Heat injured spoon, like we demonstrated long time ago. Which means that if you are looking at the heat resistance, you need to take, take that into account, otherwise your results will not be uh, good. Any other questions? No? Pardon? That's a very good question, you know, what are the ways to reduce a cost? Um, that goes back to the developing efficient methods for the isolation of the co active compound from the herbs and spices. That is one way because you really need to uh, come up with isolate to purify and extract the compound that could be added to the food product and you need to add during extraction of the compound you need to make sure that the efficacy is not decreased so that small amount of the uh, active compound could be sufficient to be added to the food product and certainly if the if the product is being prepared in bulk quantities that would reduce the cost and um, because if the cost is very high, nobody will would like to buy the product. Different effectiveness, the different strains you mean? Hmm? It depends uh, how they are able to utilize the sugar because each strain spe or species of bacteria would uh, be have different e uh, efficiency of utilizing the sugar and converting into lactic, uh, lactic acid, you know. There's a, there, there would be certainly a variation and there are commercially available starter cultures also. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I do have one uh, where we looked at, uh, I think I presented that where we uh, we worked with the University of Wisconsin a few years ago and there must be others also, but I have one publication on fermented sausages, I believe, where we looked at, developed model for different pathogens during fermentation, drying and all that, you know, and the amount of uh, sugar. So that was published and we do have those models, if you remember in our passage modeling program, uh, but uh, for the drying and uh, fermentation and storage. We have one, but there are several others also, the, the software programs for that too, for fermented products. Any other questions? No? So we have some time, otherwise, uh, you know, you can contact me anytime in the few, coming few days. If you have any questions, if you want to individually talk to me, you can send me an email or call me when I go back in my office or uh, you can ask me in the coming two days. I have a very general question. I'm not related to your, your name and... Oh yes, that is right. Okay. 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 So what is your question?
Get reduced. Tendency of uh, the present organism, who is considered at the highest level of evolution, should get reduced on the primitive organisms like bacteria. Yeah. Well, most of the bacteria that are that are beneficial, there are very small percentage percent of bacteria that are of no that are harmful. So like in fermented products or yogurt when we um, make at home, it's all the beneficial bacteria. So majority of the bacteria are beneficial. And uh, bacteria in my, we know that and I talked earlier too, they continue to adapt and evolve because of the environmental conditions and certainly they become more virulent or they be become more resistant to the count, to the universally known fact that they are, they are uh, affect, that, that a particular Preservative is in controlling them. They sometimes they become resistant because of the changes in the genes, or changes in the virulence and the expression levels of expression of the genes. So that is one area that is being studied: proteomics and genomics. So evolution is a continuous process, that, and it would continue to occur. Does it answer your question to a certain extent? Yes, that is true. That is true. That is true. Any other questions? No? So we are concluding at the right time. I was told to conclude at 1.15 and it's almost 1.15. Okay, good. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Janija. Uh, now we are uh, going to have the lunch break, and after the lunch break, again we will start at uh, uh, 2 p.m. Right. Thank you very much.